up guys this is Kazi welcome to another amazing tutorial another joker tutorial I, I can't help it I mean you guys love it I love it I'm gonna keep doing it because there's just so many different looks and different vibes that are happening in this movie the really cool thing about this particular one though is that it's not necessarily a side-by-side -side match I'm going for more of a we're creating a vibe we're creating a aura like this green sickly you know color cast that we see in this shot we're trying to replicate that in our environment because it's a hospital environment maybe there's a surgery that's about to go down something bad is happening so we're trying to replicate that and that's the whole point of it i want you guys to start thinking a little bit outside the box and not necessarily like how can i nail each hue but it gets bigger than that it like this is where we become tastemakers so keep that in mind and that's the whole point of this series too you know to start looking at color schemes as a whole and how it fits in and enhances the storytelling on that note guys if you guys are enjoying the content smash that like button subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness make sure to follow me on instagram i'm dropping value bombs there every single day check out the link in the description below if you want to level up your color grading game one hour long training that's going to take you from not knowing anything about resolve all the way to grading your first professional gig let's roll the intro now let's take a second and check out the tech specs so the cameras they used were the Ari Alexa 65 LF and mini but majority of the stuff was shot with 65 which is a 65 millimeter camera and is known for its color rendition and detail but here's something very interesting the lenses they used were the Hasselblad prime DNA lenses so the premise behind this series of lenses just check this out sourcing vintage optics from different historical periods I mean this is massive so when we look at this clip and we see this nice creamy quality that we find in the highlights most of it is coming from the choice of lens that was used so this is the kind of investigation that you need to do so then you're not wasting your time trying to create something that is just impossible or if you were to do it is going to look very artificial because it just wasn't done that way in camera grading was done again by company three and especially by their senior colorist jill she's done john wick 2 john wick 3 spider-man far from home she's done so many freaking movies she's the real og just look at this she has worked on oh brother where art thou which pretty much put the foundation for di in hollywood as usual let's just drop in our palette and see what's happening here so i'm gonna make it full screen a lot of vintage colors going on here you know and and that's what puts it in that period piece world um and just dingy colors right i mean so there's nothing pure white like look at these lights you know they have a different dinge and even lawrence Schur, during his uh behind the scenes interview said that he used different age kino flows so when the kino flow light gets old it has like a weird green tint to it so he's saying that he's mixing and matching those so then these colors are on set these are not necessarily like windowed out and created in post so something to keep in mind but it, what i like about this is it's genuinely graded right because i mean it just does not look like that on set so they did push it quite a bit and that's the essence that i'm going for you know i want you guys to think outside the box when we're creating these looks and how we start to where we end up that's the play and that's what's fun about color grading for me and it never gets old even if you look at a skin tones in this one it's not necessarily really juiced you know it's kind of pale and that serves the story quite well because he's doing something that's just out of his comfort zone and those are the things that you got to think about like i mean this is a really big methodical decision for the colorist to make here so let's just go back and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring in my scopes and we're going to look at the color story through scopes so obviously the entire movie 
is very green biased and that creates that sickly Gotham City where everything is going wrong vibe and it's portrayed by color and we can even see it in the vector scope like how everything is living on that side of the spectrum like nothing is going there's not even like a hint of magenta or blue or cyan like everything is living in this world so these are really important indicators when you're creating a look to look at it from a bird's eye view and kind of just get the gist and see how the story is told through color and that said let's just jump right in i'm gonna leave my scopes right here and uh, i'm gonna get rid of this or it doesn't even matter we can just leave it there so this is the shot that we're working with obviously very different to where we want to end up and again we're not going to be hitting every single color in here and putting it here because they're not the same shots not the same environment and this is the beauty of this series that you can take an inspiration from one scene in a movie that takes place in a completely different location and then you can apply it to your scene in your movie where the context is the same, but the location is very different. All right, so first things first, this is going to be my primary node. This is going to be a node for saturation. And then we're going to jump right in with our look. So I'm going to have a hue adjustment here. Then I'm going to do a an overall look. Then we're going to work on her skin. Then we're going to do a look adjustment. We're going to do an outside afterwards. Then we'll have our global adjustment. Then we'll have our sharpening and grain. So this is the structure as of now. If anything changes, we'll just play it by ear. All right, so let's get going. Starting with the contrast first. I'm going to park it somewhere around here. And then what I want to do is raise my gamma bring my gain down just a little bit not too much gamma up and then lift down let's just bring in our image so i'm gonna click on this guy and obviously you have to be in your gallery and then select the image you want to bring in so in this case right here and then you're gonna go in here and select selected still images and that's how you're going to see the reference image so one thing that i want to do is let's do this i'm going to move this over so then we can punch in a little bit more so we can see it clearly what's happening so something like this and then let's just make our node tree smaller so we can park it there so now you guys can see it clearly working on the contrast and let me see so Keep it somewhere around here. Bring this down. Raise my gain. As always, it's going to be a dance between lift gamma gain until we dial everything in. It's not too contrasty, to be honest with you. So I'm not going to go too far with it. In my log wheels, I'm going to bring the shadows down just to give it a bit more depth and then control it with my low range. All right, now let's start giving it saturation. And again, I'm going to exaggerate it so we just have enough separation when we're creating our look. This is totally fine. And now what I want to do is I want to take this color and start putting it in this world, okay? Dingy green world. And the way we're gonna do it is super simple. We're gonna go in our hue versus hue. And then I'm gonna take my cyan because that's that color right there. And I'm gonna start rotating my hue. Now we can either go really far like that, but that's not what I wanna do. I kind of want to be in this green world. And again, going for the vibe, not for the exact color, but this is just like kind of capturing the essence of this scene. So let me see. So let's just leave it there for now, and then we'll see if we want to search something up. Now moving on to... The next node and that's where 
we're gonna dial in the look, okay? And the way I'm gonna do that is simple. I'm gonna go under my RGB curves. I'm gonna break the chain. I'm gonna grab my blue channel. I'm gonna bring it down. That's what's gonna start giving us that look. So look at this. The focus is this. I'm, I'm kind of looking at this and I'm trying to get this in that world. And now that we've done that, I think what we can do is we can go back and dial back our hue versus hue and just bring that down a little bit. Let's see. Honestly, this looks better. I mean, this is before, this is after. This is just kind of like this right here. Just look at this and look at this. So it's putting it more in that world, which looks really cool. So already, I mean, you can see, even if we just leave it here, how far we've come. And it's just such a clean grade so far. We're not pulling any keys. Nothing is going to break apart. Again, this applies to that mentality of creating a look DNA so we can apply it from shot to shot and then scene to scene or the entire project. At this point, you can even export this as a LUT and shoot with this look on and uh, it's gonna stick. So then when you bring it in, it could be just like a single node, which would be a LUT and you can apply it and just go from there and then do your balance and you're done. All right, so now one thing that I wanna do for the skin is look at right here, right? So the skin is falling a little bit more on the yellow side just to kind of make it look a little sickly and ours is like perfect. It's really natural. So let's shift that. Again, we're gonna be under hue versus hue. I'm gonna take my yellow and start taking it in that world, right? So just making it a little bit sickly. And then I'm gonna take my red and I'm gonna do the same thing. And you're gonna see, we will start going in that direction, but I don't wanna do it too much. Maybe we should go off of like his neck right there. So let's do this. And maybe I'm going to pull it back a little bit, not go as crazy. So even something like that, if I do before, obviously does not match. And then if I do after, I think this is better to be honest. So I'm going to leave it there. And now uh, let's move it over so you guys can see what's happening. All right. So this is better. So I'm not going to do anything here in this node right now. That's okay. So we obviously see that there's a vignette happening, right? So, I mean, he's almost like in the spotlight and then see it falls off here, the exposure and it falls off here. So keep that in mind. So let's try to create something similar. So what I'm going to do is in this node, go under our windows, create one. And now I'm just going to go pretty big and then Maybe go like that and let's give it tons of softness. So I'm going to go to like 23, 22 ish. And then in here, I'm just going to chain these up, editable splines and raise it. Something like that. And then what I want to do is in my outside, I want to break that editable spline, go back to normal. And then let's bring in our shot. Let's pull this down. Let's make it big so we can see what's happening. And now I'm just going to do that. And it's a very believable vignette you know what i mean because like look at this here and it's like now somewhat similar is happening here so if i just take these two and turn them on and off i mean this helps quite a bit and it's not jarring at all although i'm just gonna control the intensity of it a little bit. So this is a little better. I think it blends in a little better. So in this one, let me do something. Let me just take my gain and raise it a little bit and see if that's too much.
I mean, I had to bring it down just a touch. So that's my global adjustment. This is where we can do whatever we want. And I'll just leave it there for now. Don't need to do much with it. And then in here, instead of adding sharpening, they have a like a little soft thing going on. So there's it's like the image is sort of has this misty feel to it. And the way to create that is by subtracting midtone. So I'm just going to click on it and do negative 20 and you'll see what's happening. Like I'm going to make it bigger and then turn it on and off and you'll see even you see what I'm talking about? Like, look at this, the detail, and then it just like softens up a little bit and just same thing is going to happen to her face. I mean, just look at this right here, off, on, very subtle, but pretty big when you're looking at it in full screen in 4k. Okay. So we're going to leave that there. Just it's always the little subtle things. And then finally, we're going to add grain. And this was meant to, I mean, this was meant to look like a period piece and had a ton of grain in the actual movie. So I'm just going to crank that up. I'm going to give it some strength. And now if I make it bigger, like you see this grain and it just gives it such a nice film look. And now let's bring it next to each other. I mean, I don't know, guys, I'm really happy with it. Again, it's just we're capturing that vibe. That's what we're going for. And if I turn it on and off, let's just start going through our entire note tree and see where we started to where we ended up. So we started with our contrast and exposure then we added tons of juice then we did hue versus hue and started putting things in this world and then we did our overall look that really brought everything together and then for the skin i just took some of that life out of her skin and put her in this hue and uh, we didn't do anything in our look adjustment and then we went in and created a vignette and pulled her out and then brought everything else down just like we see here in the global adjustment, we barely did anything. And then instead of adding sharpening, we used our midtone detail tool to add some creamy glowy effect. And then finally added grain. And uh, let's check out our final look in full screen. I hope you guys had a blast. This was such a fun tutorial to put together. Drop a comment below. Let me know which look should I recreate next. Smash that like button. Subscribe to my channel. Please share this with friends. Make sure to check out the link in the description if you want to level up your color grading game. I will see you guys in the next video.